Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this review of the EVGA 3080 FTW Ultra Hybrid. Um, so this is a great card, I'm just going to review it, try to do it as quickly as possible, um, go over my hardware, the pricing, availability, um, changes I've made to the card, and then its performance in both gaming and mining, followed by um, my two points of comparison, which is to the 3080 XC3 stock and 30 XC3 hybrid, as well as the um, 5700 XT Red Devil. So, um, yeah, let's go over all that. So, the first thing, uh, my system, I have the following specs. You can see it right here, um, in addition to, obviously, the 3080 FTW Ultra Hybrid. Um, I am running a Ryzen 5 5600X on the X570 platform, running 32 gigs of RAM at 3600 megahertz CL18, um, and my operating system has NVMe, NVMe 4.0 storage. Um, not that that really makes a difference. Anyway, um, on to how I obtained the card and pricing. Um, so I was able to obtain this card in early February. Um, I signed up for the Notify queue on the EVGA website directly. I believe it was in like November. It was, it was the first day it was available. It was within the first 10 minutes. Um, and anyway, it took uh, whatever that is, five months to get through the queue, which really isn't that bad in my opinion. So I hope all of you registered for those queues um, a long time ago. Um, anyway, so I was actually able to uh, obtain this card at under retail pricing. Um, so pre-tax, pre-shipping, the card's $900. Tax and shipping was $65. And then using the subreddit Build a PC Sales affiliate code, I was able to save $105, which is um, insane to me that they're allowing those codes to work on the NVIDIA 3000 series. Um, but they are. So I paid in $861 for this card. Um, let's go over the changes I've made to the card. So um, the biggest change is I flashed the 450-watt um, overclock BIOS on it. I believe the one I flashed was from Tech Power Up, not from EVJ itself, um, but that's great. I would definitely recommend you do that. You do have to switch. The FTW3 has a physical switch that you need to flip on the card from auto to OC. Um, so you flip to OC and then flash the BIOS onto it, um, and that'll let you get to the 450-watt power limit. Um, just to prove that I actually have that power limit, um, I'm going to go into power up, tech power up, GPU Z, um, and see that my maximum power limit is 450 watts. So, great. Um, cool. Um, another change I've made is I upgraded the thermal pads from the stock ones. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to purchase Gelid Extreme or Ultimate or whatever, the 12 watt per meter Kelvin ones, one millimeter pads on eBay. Um, they're pretty much sold out everywhere right now. Um, so I was only able to purchase the one millimeter pads and I installed those either um, in just one of them for the parts of the PCB that required one millimeter um, or two and three millimeters. So I, I had to stack um, those thermal pads on the PCB in order to get them to fit correctly. So that was a really easy um, process. I've done it before with other cards, so no issues there. Um, as far as whether I would say that's worth it, I would definitely say it's worth it if you're mining. Um, I thought, frankly, it would make a bigger difference than it actually did. I probably saw a 5 to 8 degree Celsius improvement after installing the new pads. I know some users online have, have cited like massive improvements, um, and then some have cited you know, zero improvements, which I think the truth, as always, is probably somewhere in the middle. Um, and in this case, for me, that's where it was. It was in the middle. Um, and then finally, the final mod I've made to the card, which is super ghetto, is I have thermal taped copper heat sinks. Um, to the back of the back plate, just in an attempt to siphon away more of that heat from the back plate in order to get the GDDR6 memory junction temps down um, as low as possible, primarily during mining. And then I have a, a 140, 140 millimeter case fan um, blowing on those heat sinks um, directly as it, it, my case is open um, on the side. I don't, I don't keep the side panel on. Um, so it's blowing directly on those heat sinks just to try to siphon away as much of that heat as possible. Cool. Um, so let's jump into the gaming review. This is an awesome gaming card. I will leave it to all the big YouTube channels in order to um, display FPS. It's pretty much what you'd expect. Um, the, the really interesting thing, I think, about the hybrid is um, A, the overclock, B, the noise, and C, the thermals, as always. Um, so let's just jump right into the overclock. I'm going to share my screen, um, or rather my overclock here. You can see that my power limit is 118% of stock. Um, which is what you get with a 450 watt BIOS. 
I'm able to get a stable plus 150 core clock, um, plus 1000 memory clock, and then I've left the fan speed at default. Um, I replaced the, I guess one more change I've made is I replaced the radiator fans. Um, that came, It came with four pin RGB fans and I replaced it with three pin um, Noctua radiator fans. I think it's like the P15s or something, P12s rather. Um, but anyway, um, so this fan only controls the fan on the actual card that blows on the PCB. Um, and I just leave that at stock. Cool. So that's that's my stable overclock. This is stable both um, running extended benchmarks as well as extended gaming sessions. So um, no issues there. This is the 3D Mark score I'm able to get um, at this benchmark. You can see I have a graphic score of 19184, which I think is quite good. Um, it's better than average um, by almost a thousand points. So. For me, I'm not like a super hardcore um, overclocker, so that's totally good enough for me. Um, yeah. Uh, finally, I just want to share some of the sensor data I have while using this card in this benchmark. Um, my GPU clock was able to hit 2.16 gigahertz. Um, I know it gets up to 2.175 sometimes. Um, my GPU temp under load max is 50 Celsius, which goes up to about 57, 58 um, if you really let it run for a long time. Hotspot being 65 Celsius and memory temps while performing gaming workloads never breaks 80 Celsius. So that's great. Um, the only other interesting thing here is these are all maxes. You can see in the GPU-Z you're able to kind of set current reading versus max reading. So these are the maxes which represent when I was running this 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. Um, and at maximum my card pulled 404 watts from the board. Um, which, as I've already discussed, is not the full 450, but it's good enough for my purposes. Um, so cool, that's my overclock. Um, noise in this card, it's a hybrid. The, one of the reasons you buy a hybrid is because it's really quiet. Um, and it is really quiet. Um, you can probably hear it right now, or if you can't, it's because it's quiet. And it remains quiet, even under load. Um, so the noise is really amazing, especially, um, as I'll get into with the comparison section, especially compared to an air-cooled card. Um, I've really been impressed, even open case, this thing is, like I barely even notice it. Um, thermals are great as well, as we covered already, um, using the sensor data. Um, if you want the best, you should go water. Um, and in some cases it can be more expensive, but at least with this hybrid card, they're really the same price um, at retail, of course, as the air cards. So. Um, I've been really impressed with both the noise and the thermals during gaming uh, of this 3080 Ultra Hybrid. So, let's move on to mining. Um, I've never mined before. Um, the 30 series came out, and I'm not like a big miner. I just plug my stuff into NiceHash, and I let it run while I'm at work, while I'm asleep, while I'm out having fun, whatever. Um, I understand the criticism that mining gets, and... Um, I understand why people are upset about it, but frankly, right now, if you have purchased a recent graphics card, you've paid a price that's so inflated um, that really it's too expensive to not mine, just given the current profitability. Um, so mining profitability will go down this summer after F2.0 comes out. Um, they're switching to proof of stake rather than proof of work, something like that. Um, basically, mining will not be as profitable. As I'm mining Ethereum now, all the algorithms on programs like NiceHash are mining Ethereum. So, anyway, uh, getting into my overclock for mining, let's go back to Afterburner. Um, and this profile right here is what I use for mining. Um, I'm at 70% power limit, minus 200 on my core clock, and then I've cranked memory all the way to the top, and I've locked fans at 50%. Um, so this really does what I need um, at this setting. Um, I believe I pull about 286 watts, although if you um, run the calculations, I might be incorrect, but that's just off the top of my head. Um, it's 70% of 450. Um, and then I get about 101 or 102 mega hash, um, which is great. And it's what the 3080 should get um, if you read about the maximum performance of the 3080 in mining. Um, as far as noise during mining, because it's the hybrid, again, um, it's really not that bad. Uh, my fan's only at 50%, which keeps temps reasonable for me. Um, obviously, temps would go lower if I crank the fan higher, but then it would get louder. And especially when I'm asleep, I sleep in the same room as my PC, and I have an open case, so I really don't like it to be loud. Um, at 50%, it's barely even audible, um, more white noise than anything. 
Um, so I, I really am happy with the noise during mining. Thermals during mining, it gets a little hairy. Um, obviously, as everybody knows, or if you don't know, as you're about to learn, um, the memory junction on these 30 series cards gets really hot while mining. It is the uh, related to the GDDR6. I believe it's the um, the GDDR6 modules are on either side of the PCB, so it's the inside in between the two modules that gets really hot, or something like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, my card um, at stock without upgrading the thermal pads and without upgrading the uh, PCB upgrading, applying the heat sinks to the PCB, it would hit around 100 degrees Celsius, 102 degrees Celsius um, on a warm day inside my room. Um, after my mods, I typically get it down to about 96 degrees Celsius, 94 degrees Celsius. So in my mind, that's a win. Um, the pads were pretty expensive. I believe I spent uh, like 75 bucks in total on the modifications. So um, in my mind, it's worth it to hopefully extend the life cycle of the card, um, as well as just bring temps to a more reasonable level. But of course, you're going to have to make that calculation for yourself. Um, EVG obviously offers a very generous warranty as well, so take that into your considerations. Um, thermals while mining, the uh, GPU temp never breaks 40, 50 degrees Celsius. It's totally fine. Um, the only concerning bit is that memory temperature, um, the junction temp, um, which I'm sure you'll be able to research much more if you're curious about. Um, so yeah, mining's great. The 102 mega hash currently makes me about 10 to 11 bucks a day. Um, so hopefully this card will pay for itself in less than three months, which is just ridiculous, um, the profitability of mining currently. Anyway, let's get into comparisons. Um, I have two points of comparison to this card. The first is another 3080. Um, it's an XC3 Ultra that I was able to purchase um, in like November um, of last year of 2020. Um, that I bought the air cooler model and then I upgraded to the hybrid model. And then the second point of comparison is the GPU I was using prior to the 30 series launch, um, which is a AMD 5700 XT Power Color Red Devil. Um, so both great cards. Let's cover the other 3080 first. Um, the biggest difference here and the most interesting thing is definitely the noise and the temp of the actual GPU die. Um, so both in terms of improvement from the stock air cooler to the hybrid cooler on the 3080 XC3 Ultra, um, the noise levels and temps just went way down after installing the hybrid kit. And that's also true when we compare the 3080 FTW hybrid to the 3080 XC3 Ultra um, stock. So huge improvements, really worth it, in my opinion. If you're buying an EVGA card um, this generation, I think it's awesome. If your case can fit an extra 240 RAD, as an exhaust, obviously, you don't want to intake your GPU RAD as it's really hot. Um, I would recommend it. I would recommend it. I would recommend buying the hybrid card if you have a choice. And even if you don't have a choice, I would recommend purchasing the hybrid kit separately um, for about 100 bucks and installing it on your XC3 or FTW3 EVGA card. Um, Performance-wise between the two, the, the XC3 and the FTW3, they're approximately the same. Um, the biggest difference is that power draw as well as just the size of the card. Um, the FTW3 is quite a bit bigger, um, especially with the hybrid kit um, than the XC3 is. Um, so power draw, not that big of a deal if you're just wanting to play games. Um, it's really just when you get into overclocking and really maximizing the performance of your card that that starts to matter. So um, obviously at this point, if you're interested in one, you're interested in the other as well, um, as they're both pretty unattainable. But um, that's my that's my summary there. Uh, as far as the 5700 XT, um, thermals are a little better. Uh, that card had amazing thermals. It hit like 60 Celsius under load. I really loved that card, um, but in terms of frames... I didn't, I, again, I never mind on that card, but in terms of FPS, the 3080 is obviously much better. Um, that's comparing apples to oranges, um, really, there. So those are my two points of comparison. If you have more questions, definitely ask below. Um, but in conclusion, this is an awesome card. Um, it is really quiet. It is really cool, and um, it mines really well. So what more can you want? If you can get it, purchase it, I recommend it. Um, I like EVGA. I think they have a great warranty program, and um, this FDW3 card gets two thumbs up for me, especially um, once you swap out those thermal pads and add the thermal pads in between the backplate and the PCB. I think that makes a big difference, 
as other YouTubers have covered, um, it's kind of a bummer that they didn't include thermal pads in between the backplate and the PCB at stock, but obviously that's um, something you're going to be able to change quite easily, um, and not even that expensive. I think if you want um, if you want to only put the pads in between the backplate and the PCB, not even open up the card and put it on the actual memory chips, um, VRMs and whatnot, it's quite easy. I don't even think um, you need to break the sticker that you know implies that you opened up the card to do that. Um, that you need three millimeter pads for the 3080 FTW3, and I don't even think you need to buy nice pads. I think you can just kind of buy um, like inexpensive, crappy pads for that because. Obviously, the big difference is not in the thermal conductivity of the pads at that point. It's just the pads, whether they exist or not. Um, so, yeah, that'd be the big recommendation I have. And that concludes my review. Thank you for watching.